Hey guys, welcome to unit six. This is section one. Today we're going to be taking a look at properties of exponents. So before we jump in here, let's just quick talk a little bit about some notation. Whenever I have a base raised to a power, this is a base here, and this is my exponent. Uh, this is whole entire expression is known as a power expression. All right, and so today we're going to talk about some of the properties of these exponents in handling different types of calculations with exponents. All right, we're going to jump right into talking about some of these properties uh, by doing some examples. In example one, we want to evaluate this expression. So here I have the base of 2.5 raised to the zero power. Anything, any base raised to the zero power or the zero exponent is equal to one. Even if I had some sort of ridiculous number like 1,475 to the zero power, it's still equal to one. Our next expression is negative three to the negative second exponent. In today's notes, you're gonna learn that we always rewrite negative exponents as positive exponents. Whenever there's a negative exponent that's applied to a base, we're gonna take the reciprocal of that base. So this is one over negative three now to the positive second power. And when we take one over negative three to the positive second power, you're gonna end up with one over positive nine. In our next example, we're gonna simplify the expression. So now we have two to the zero power times x squared. We just learned that anything to the zero power is one. So this is one x squared. That's divided by y to the negative two. We also just talked about negative exponents that we take the reciprocal of that base. Another way to think about that is when you see a negative exponent in the numerator, that base goes down to the denominator, just like we saw up here in example 1b. Well now, this time, we see a negative exponent that appears in the denominator, and it's gonna get rewritten as a positive power up in the numerator. So this becomes one x squared y to the positive two. Notice it came out of the denominator now, and it's in the numerator. One x squared y squared is your final simplified expression. In example three, we have a product of two bases that are the same. And here is our product property. So this says that we are gonna take our exponents three and five and add them. And this makes sense, this gives us two to the eighth. And the reason why this makes sense is if we were to simplify these two expressions, two cubed is two times two times two. If I multiply that to two to the fifth, that's two times two times two times two times two, then you'll count that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight twos that are being multiplied to each other. And that repeated multiplication can be rewritten as two to the eighth power. Our next expression is negative seven squared divided by negative seven to the fourth. Now to simplify this quotient, I am going to take negative seven to the two minus four. This gives me negative seven to the negative two power. All right, we learned above that whenever that negative exponent appears in the numerator, we're gonna send it down to the denominator. So this becomes one over negative seven squared. When I square my negative seven, I end up with one over 49. Finally, we got d to the negative third being raised to the fifth power. This is your power of powers, and this says to multiply those. This gives me d to the negative 15th power. Again, my d is my base, it appears in the numerator, so it's gonna come down to the denominator, be one over d to the positive 15th power. Those negative exponents make us write that reciprocal of the base to the positive power. All right, we have a few more properties here. We've got a power of a product property, which says now if you're gonna take a product like AB and raise it to a power like M, you need to distribute that exponent to those two factors. And then we have a quotient, sorry, a power of a quotient property. That power of a quotient property says that whenever you're gonna take a quotient like A over B and raise it to the N power, then both the numerator and the denominator get raised to that same power. 
All right, simplify each of the following expressions. We have a product here, negative three times x, that's being raised to the third power. Keep in mind that this is the same thing as saying negative three x times negative three x times negative three x, which is why we can write this as negative three cubed times x cubed. When I cube a negative three, that's a negative times a negative times a negative, which is a negative 27 x cubed. In our next expression, we have b divided by negative three all raised to the fourth power. Again, anything raised to the fourth power is really like that base, b to the negative three times itself four times. So if I were to rewrite this as repeated multiplication, then I would have b over negative three times b over negative three times b over negative three times b over negative three. And if I multiply my numerator straight across, that's b to the fourth divided by negative three to the fourth. Now, if I take a negative number and raise it to an even power, that should give me a positive number. Negative three to the fourth is positive 81. All right, next up I have two x being divided by five. I am going to take my shortcut now, my two product, uh, sorry, my two properties that I just talked about, and I'm going to take that three and distribute to both the two. So this is two cubed, x cubed, all over five cubed. All right, two cubed is eight x cubed divided by five cubed, which is 125. In example D, I have the product 3C over 4 being raised to the negative 2. Now, here is the case where we have a quotient being raised to a negative exponent. We are right away going to take the reciprocal of that quotient, so now it's 4 over 3C, and raise it to the positive exponent. Remember, negative exponents cause us to take the reciprocal of that base. All right, now I have four squared over three squared c squared. That results in 16 over nine c squared. All right, in this example one, or sorry, example four e, I now have a binomial. This is completely different than some of the examples we've already done. And a lot of us will make the mistake that thinks that we need to take this two and distribute it to the 2x and to the 5. However, what you need to do is rewrite this as 2x plus 5 times itself 2x plus 5. From here, we are going to distribute 2x to both terms in that second product. That gives us 4x squared plus 10x. And then we need to multiply the 5 to the 2x and to the 5. That gives us another five times two x, which is 10 x plus 25. So this product, when simplified, and combine our like terms of two 10 x's there, that gives me 20 x plus 25. This results in what we call a perfect square trinomial. We'll learn more about these in second semester, but just keep in mind, anytime when we square a binomial, you can't simply distribute that exponent to the two, the two terms inside. All right, in our next example here, we're going to get a little bit of a word problem. We want to find the volume of the cone below. We know that volume is one third area of the base times the height. So we're going to write that out as one third area of our circular base is pi r squared times the height of our cone. All right, so we're gonna substitute in what we know. We got one third pi. Our radius is the distance from the center of that circle to the edge. That is h over two squared times h again. Simplifying our equation, you can see that we have a quotient that's being raised to the second power. That gives us one third pi h squared over four times h again. Simplifying all of this by multiplying our numerators and our denominators straight across, it gives us pi h cubed over three times four, which is 12. And this is our expression for our volume.